friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, August 4th, and it's a overcast, kind of thunderstormy sort of Sunday here in southeastern Pennsylvania, but that's okay. We we needed the water, so we'll take the rain. Ah, so I have a my, my Lane Crown Achievement pipe here, and I am smoking some Haunted Bookshop this morning. We do have a new tobacco of the month. Uh, that new tobacco of the month is uh, Newminster number 403 Superior Round Slices from 2022, uh, chosen by you, the Friday Night Livestream viewers. Uh, that's never going to get old. Uh, I'm not smoking this today because I just haven't had enough time to really work through it yet, but it'll, we'll get to it in a couple weeks, and therefore I am enjoying on a bookshop this morning because it's comfortable and familiar and that's what I wanted so I wanted to talk a bit today about rabbit holes and if you don't know what I mean by rabbit holes I mean the uh, you know you're doing something and then you're doing something else and one thing leads to another and before you know it you're off in a place very different from where you started or from where you actually needed to be uh, this happens a lot in life. You know, one of the, the common almost tropes these days is, you know, you, you go on YouTube and you, you watch a video, but then it suggests a different video. So you watch that one and then they're suggested different. And you end up just going deeper and deeper into these things. And I have done this. I have found myself watching things that I never intended to. You know, I, I, I just, I never thought I would be interested in. And sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes you discover entire worlds that you didn't know existed. In fact, that is pretty much how I found YouTube, uh, the YouTube pipe community. Right? If I really uh, go back that far and think about it, I was on a pipe forum and somebody made an offhanded comment about how some guy, uh, I think it was he was, it was some guy uses tubing to cover his instead of a softy bit or something like that and then there was a comment about oh I love how this guy clenches his pipe and there was a link and I well, what's that I clicked on it and it was a video of uh, Northwest pipe smoker uh, and off to the side there was a video that was my pipe collection or titled something like that and that was the first matches video that I saw and I that one, you know, the first one was, you know, Tom's great, and I really enjoyed his video and all that, but it didn't grab me in the way that the matches one did, because there was this guy sitting in his basement showing me his pipe collection, and I thought, this is this is a thing? This is, you know, the first one, Tom's video was a one-off. John's was an indication that this was a thing, and uh, I probably spent the next two or three hours watching YouTube pipe community videos, not, you know, just being amazed that it existed. So, anyway, rabbit holes can be a good thing, but they can also be a, a complete and total waste of time. So, you know, yeah. excuse me. Ah, tamper doesn't want to stay put. So, you can also, you know, waste a lot of time with them. Uh, I find as I get older, it seems like it's easier for me to fall into these things. And maybe that's because I've become more and more focused as, as we age. I think we tend to do that. You know, we tend to go from a very broad perspective of what's possible down to a very, very narrow perspective as, as we age, uh, which is not necessarily a good thing. And we all, but it's not necessarily a good thing, but it is in some ways essential uh, because we got to you know, focus the resource where we where it needs to be focused. At the same time, I have very little time for exploring anything. You know, I, I've, I've just been so busy lately and I have maybe an hour a day to play with most days. Which is okay, you know, I'm not complaining about it. I, I love what I do for a living, and I love that you know, my wife's able to be in Pittsburgh taking care of her family, and that, you know, I, I can 
do what I can do to, to help support that. And, and so, you know, this is, this is all good stuff. But at the end of the day, literally, I got about an hour and I can choose what to do with that hour. And frankly, a lot of the time it's just watch something stupid on TV until the hour is gone so I can go to bed. You know, a lot of the times that's what it is. But sometimes I get into things and, and find myself trying to fix things or something like that. And I had a recent one that I just thought was worth talking about just because of the twists and turns. And I actually tried to make some notes and you can see just how complicated these notes are. I'm not, it doesn't matter what I wrote, you can't read my writing anyway. Uh, yeah, I got loops and boxes because <laughs> I can't even recreate the steps. So let me tell you a little bit about my latest rabbit hole. And this is going to be a lot of uh, computeries, uh, techie jargon and computer programming type jargon and stuff like that. Do not be impressed by it. I barely know what I'm talking about. That's why it's a rabbit hole. Um, now, I have used computers for a very long time. You know, since I was a kid, I... I I've been fascinated by them, and I, I know, I probably know the inner workings of computers and operating systems better than most people do, but I am far, far from an expert. I just happen to know enough to be dangerous. Uh, so don't be impressed by any of this, and also don't tune out because of the geekiness of it. Follow the story, because I think the story's what's interesting here, not the, not the actual subject matter itself. So uh, a while back, in the middle of a live stream, the monitor of my, so my laptop is a System76 laptop that's about seven years old, and I love this thing. System76 makes fantastic hardware. It is bulletproof. I've, I've dropped this thing on concrete. It's, it's fine. Uh, well, it's not fine. That's the problem. But I've, I've abused this thing. It's run, it runs pretty much 24-7 down here, which is a very dusty environment. Uh, I've not taken care of this computer, but it's lasted seven years, which for a laptop is pretty good. I run Linux, which means I can run it on old, you know, I don't have to have the latest and greatest, and it works fantastic. So, um, A while back, a month or two ago, I'm doing a live stream, and, and all of a sudden, so I had this line down my monitor. Okay, that occurs first. So there's a line, and I'm thinking, well, Monitor the, the LCD panel itself might be going bad. It might be the ribbon connector, maybe maybe you know a little bit of corrosion on one of the connection points or something like that, or it could be graphics on on the motherboard. I don't know, but it's just one line and that's not a big deal. So I'm in the middle of a live stream and all of a sudden that line multiplies to about forty. Like okay, this isn't good. You know, I I got to fix this. So. I'm starting to think about it more, and I, I think, you know, it's probably not something simple. You know, if it, if, if it was just the one line, maybe, but 40 lines all of a sudden, that, that's something going bad. And then I turn it, come down here the next day to, to start checking it out, and the darn thing has fixed itself. It's just the one line again. Now I'm actually more worried. Um, you know, intermittent problems like that, because I didn't touch it. it. It stayed in that place. It's not like it jarred back into position or something. I think there's something going wrong on the in the graphics department, and this is beyond me. Uh, Seven-year-old computer, I'm probably not going to get it fixed. You know, So I, I start shopping for a new computer, which is what you do. And, uh, of course, that's a whole rabbit hole because, well, if I'm going to spend that much money, I'm going to get something good I'm not gonna you know, I'm not I'm not gonna save two hundred dollars and get something that's less than cutting edge that I can fully take advantage of and yeah I know I don't need the cutting edge but hey it's fun so I'm doing all these different configurations on the system 76 page I'm exploring other options from other companies um, I focus on system 76 because they build for Linux um, but it's not necessary. And I'm and, and you know it's getting more and more expensive the more I'm going down this rabbit hole of you know what what kind of a GPU do I need and all this. And then pretty much fortuitously a um, ThinkPad T four hundred falls into my lap. This is a laptop that's about fourteen years old. 
Now, Linux runs really well on old laptops, so I thought, well, what the heck? I'll have a backup, so I go and I install Linux on that, and I have to, because it's an old system, because it's kind of limited in, in its memory and, and processor, I decided to go with a very basic installation of a, of a pack, of a distro called Arch Linux, which you can tweak quite a bit, so that's all you need to know about it. You can really slim, slim this down and make it, you know, height and run on, on very simple equipment. And I get this idea that, hey, you know what, I'm going to take this 14-year-old computer that nobody would pay attention to, and I'm not only going to run Linux on it, and it's going to run faster than a, a, a brand new uh, Macintosh, but I'm also going to install OBS on it, and I'm going to do it, use it to do live streaming. So this was my, my plan. Now, it turns out I can't do that. Um, but I spent a lot of time trying. And in, in doing all this, I start getting into things like compiling from source code and trying to fix these errors and stuff. And, and then in the middle of all this somewhere, my wife's laptop breaks. And she's got an HP that's only a couple years old. And I thought, well, let's, you know, let me see if I can fix it. And the fact is, her, I fixed hers once before because she dropped it. And uh, to make a long story short, I needed to replace the cable that connects the, mo the monitor to the rest of the computer. And I needed to do a lot of stuff to the case itself because like plastic bits have broken and stuff. Well, the same computer, uh, Isabelle, our dog, got tangled up in the power cable and pulled it off the table. And it boots up fine. It just doesn't have any screen. So I plug it into my uh, dock here so I can see it on a big monitor and then I get all of her stuff off of it and she buys a new computer and we put all of her stuff on the new computer and now she's happy and she's forgotten about it and I'm like, well, what am I going to do with this thing? Uh, maybe I can just, you know, get the... So I open it up and sure enough it was not terribly difficult to just kind of reseat the cable and, and the monitor was working again and I thought, oh great, well... While I'm in here, why don't I increase the memory, put a new solid-state drive in, and you know I'll have a pretty reasonable computer for what I need, and then I can forget about buying a new one. So I ordered the solid-state drive, I ordered the additional memory, so I've maxed out the memory on this, and I got a couple terabyte drive in it, and I put it all back together, and of course it doesn't work now. Um, the the cable was actually bad, so I have. I order a new cable and I take it all apart and I put it back together. There was something else in there. Oh, there was a power connector for something that I had to replace, but I can't. Oh, the charging, the, the actual charging port power line had, had, because I think that's where the dog, anyway. So th there's, I've had this thing open and closed about six times and the cases, all the things that I had fixed on the case are starting to break again, so I have to re-epoxy stuff and all that, and I get it all back together, and uh, it is working. So I installed, since this is a much more uh, modern set of hardware, I installed a, a really nice uh, operating system from System76 called uh, Pop! OS. It's a Linux distribution. Uh, I've never used it before. I thought it would be fun to play with. It's got tiling window managers and stuff. And it's it's pretty neat. And I installed that and I got it running. And, and all, I'm pretty happy with that. But as I'm doing all this, I'm still thinking I'm going to make this T400 thing work. And I go back to that. And I keep trying to fix that. And I'm going back and forth between the two. Well, in doing all this compiling from source code stuff and all of that. And that sounds... It, it's really not... It's just a line of code that you put into the terminal and it happens. So don't don't think I'm I'm some super computer programming genius because I'm not, as you're going to hear in a moment. Uh, as I'm doing all this, I'm opening up some of the files just to see what's going on. And I recognize the code uh, as being uh, either C or C++. I don't know because I'm not that good at it. But back in 1992-93, I tried to learn C++. And it was a disaster. I, I Usually I can pick up programming, well, usually I can pick up that kind of thing, which is just a logical flow, right? I can pick that up pretty quickly. And I've taught myself a couple of programming languages, 
uh, and I can use them pretty well. So I can code in Python very effectively and, and I can get that done, get stuff done. Uh, I know a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, I, I can use R and things like MATLAB. You know, that, these aren't problems. C really kicked my butt back in the day and I was afraid of it, you know, and I thought to myself, well, you know what? I'm going to beat that. <laughs> I'm going to, I saw, I saw a, a quote last night that I really liked and the quote was, and it's apparently a Polish proverb, dragons are hard to beat, but you have to try. And that's the way I looked at it. You know what? I'm going to beat this dragon. So now I'm starting to play around on the T400 with uh, C++ and I'm taking two different online C++ courses simultaneously and uh, starting to try to figure out what's the best way to, to do this. You know, do I want to use an IDE? Do I want to just use a, a uh, X editor? Uh, going back and forth between those things and then you know, trying to configure text editors and learning about them. And I and then my wife comes home and she's like, so, you know, what have you been up to? And I have no reason for any of this. I fixed the problem. Well, first off, I'm still, so I still get the line on the monitor. I'm still using that computer. I now have two additional laptops, one of which could easily take over for the, for the laptop with the line in the monitor. But I, I got the operating system running on that one and I just put it away and never touched it again. Because I'm so focused on this T400, which is a complete and utter waste of my time. I just don't know why I'm doing it. But I got a lot of stuff to do today, but I would love nothing more than to just go up there and spend the day continuing to try to figure out C++. For no re I have no, I have absolutely no plan to write a program. I, I just, I just, dragons are hard to kill, but you have to try. <laughs> I don't know. So why do we do this? Why, why do we find these things that just ups, create obsessions in our life and, and we just have to follow them to no practical end? Unless the practical end is just that you've, you've had some fun, you've exercised your mind, and uh, maybe you've made yourself a little bit better, maybe you've made yourself a little bit worse, I don't know. My phone is buzzing. Oh, that's my rabbit hole story. Hope I didn't. Hope I didn't bore you too much with the techie stuff. But I thought it was a funny story, and I I have similar stories about pipe smoking and fly fishing and everything else. It's just hobbies tend to do this, I suppose. Uh, what's going on today? I don't know. The wife came home yesterday. She said she wants to go out. That could mean anything. She said go out to breakfast. She hasn't gotten up yet, so I'm going to go try to gently wake her. And uh, we'll, we'll see where that leads. I got some stuff I got to take care of, just, you know, basic household chore type stuff. And then I get on with next week. We will not be here next week. Uh, next Sunday, I will be driving home from Columbus because the pipe, Columbus Pipe Show is Friday and uh, Saturday of, of this coming week. Uh, if you're there, please uh, stop by, say hello. Don't stop by because I'll be all over the place. <laughs> Find me and say hello. Uh, if you're there on Friday, don't forget that there is a slow smoke competition beginning at 3 p.m. And I'm hoping to join in the fun there and I hope other folks will will join in as well, because uh, otherwise it'll just be me <laughs> smoking a pipe, which is not much of a competition. Okay, that went. If I wasn't so lazy, I would probably cut that out and redo it, but um, I got too much to do today to be editing. Yes, I hope to see some of you in the slow smoke competition. 
I'm sure there will be plenty of other folks involved. With that, friends, I am going to draw this to a close. No Sunday show next week. No live stream next Friday. I might try to do a short hello from the show on Friday night, but don't count on it because it gets a little crazy. Uh, but I will definitely be back the following Friday and Sunday, and I really look forward to seeing you then. So with that, my friends, uh, you all take care, and until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.